than $3 billion. That's how much Americans are expected to gamble away on the NCAA basketball tournament by the time it ends tonight. That's the most in the history of the game, with legalized sports betting now driving the increase. As many as 10 million Americans live with a gambling addiction. CBN's Brody Carter shows us how harmful that is for individuals, families, and for society. Now I can bet the game on FanDuel Sportsbook anywhere in Pennsylvania. The ads seem to come from all directions, and legalized sports betting opened the floodgates. The industry is booming, with more than $52 billion wagered last year alone. Sports wagering is a bad bet for everyone. In 30 states, D.C. and Puerto Rico have given the OK, providing access to numerous available betting platforms. Paul Betura, with Focus on the Family, says as this encouragement to gamble grows, so do the problems. For Christians, it's a particularly um, nefarious thing. As believers, we're called to um, serve the poor. And what does gambling do? It actually exploits the poor. As Christians, uh, we're called to love our neighbor. But what does gambling do? It uh, only works. We only win if, if, if the other guy loses. This year's March Madness will generate the most betting in tournament history. Some 45 million Americans expected to wager more than $3 billion. We're also encouraged uh, to work for our wages and not to expect something for nothing. Uh, but that's sort of the exact opposite of what gambling is. Still, Christians aren't universally against it. Not even 40% think sports betting is morally wrong, according to LifeWay Research. So Christian leaders hope to uncover gambling's ugly truth and teach God-honoring ways to protect your money and family. The fact is, most people who gamble lose. Reports show apps like Skybet, one of the industry's most popular, have adopted invasive tracking and profiling techniques to identify problem gamblers. God gives us free will if you want to do that and throw your money away, be my guest. But uh, I would suggest go through the biblical stewardship course. Find out what God's word has to say about this issue. Art Ally, founder of the Timothy Plan, approach to mutual funds says to break the chains of gambling, we first need to learn the biblical approach to handling money. That can lead to growing wealth in healthy ways. To help, he's giving away this resource and nine hour course on his website timothyplan.com. All you have to do is click on it. It is free. We don't charge anybody for it. It's our gift to the body of Christ because the problem we have is all of our training in handling money, no matter what aspect of money, comes from the world, not the church in general. Art says the church's approach to stewardship in general is giving, which is why he's teaching about spending, saving, and investing with integrity to hopefully transform lives. Brody Carter, CBN News. Well, there's a reason casinos track problem gamblers and offer them free hotel nights and free meals and all the other freebies is because they know that they're hooked and that they can uh, literally tap that resource until that resource is tapped out. There's a reason in America gambling was outlawed. Uh, you look back in our history, and there were a bunch of train wrecks all caused by gambling, where people would gamble away their family fortunes. They would leave their children without any food. And in the aftermath of that, uh, just terrible tragedies, uh, we all decided as a country that gambling shouldn't happen in the United States. Now we're opening it up, and it was first through these uh, lotteries, which I view as a tax on the poor, uh, where, you, you know, for a dollar or ten dollars a ticket, you have some kind of dream that you're going to go home with a hundred million dollars. Uh, that, they, they got away with it on the basis that, well, we're going to fund the education system, uh, the money from this gambling is going to go and to educate children and all of this kind of thing. These things are horrible, and, and why any Christian would go into this is a mystery, but please don't. Uh, what gambling does is it releases things, chemicals in your brain. It, you become addicted to it, and when you're addicted to it, uh, there's no end until you're out of money.
In other news, horrifying scenes of brutality. That's what Ukrainian forces are reporting as they move into areas abandoned by Russian troops. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. Ukraine is accusing Russian forces of committing war crimes in the city of Bucha near the outskirts of Kiev. A warning to our viewers, some of the images you're about to see are disturbing. Here's CBN's Dale Hurd. Western leaders are condemning the atrocities in the town of Bucha that are said to have been committed by retreating Russian troops. In the city northwest of the capital, Kiev, bodies lie in the streets. Some victims with their hands bound and others shot at close range. Local officials say it appears some were tortured. Among those killed, the dean of the Slavic Evangelical Seminary, Vitaly Vinogradov, reportedly killed by the retreating Russian army. Bucha's mayor said hundreds were buried in a mass grave. This satellite image shows a 45-foot-long trench near a church. Residents said Russian troops went building to building checking people's phones for any evidence of anti-Russian activity. And if any was found, took them away or shot them. Ukrainian President Zelensky on CBS Face the Nation calls what happened in Bucha genocide. When we find people with, with uh, hands tied behind their back and decapitated, the kids who were killed and tortured, so it wasn't enough just to kill. The head of NATO told CNN there must be an investigation by the International Criminal Court. It is a brutality against uh, civilians uh, we haven't uh, seen in, uh, uh, in Europe uh, for decades. Beaten back from Kyiv, Russian forces are retreating to the south and east of the country, known as the Donbass region. Sunday at the Central Evangelical Church in Lviv, the choir sang Amazing Grace. The sermon was about God's love and loving others. As world leaders learn of what happened in Bucha, they're comparing it to the crimes committed by the Soviets and Nazis. And some are calling for even tougher economic penalties on Russia. Dale Hurd, CBN News. All right, thank you, Dale. While millions of Ukrainians are fleeing the fighting, not everyone can pick up and go. That's why one American minister is doing what she can to help rescue those with disabilities and special needs trapped by their circumstances. CBN Charlene Aaron has the story. More than 50 years ago, a diving accident left Johnny Erickson Tata in a wheelchair, unable to walk. Since then, she has been a strong advocate for people with disabilities. Her latest work, rescuing those stuck in Ukraine since Russia invaded the country. She told us on CBN's prayer link about the difficulties many have been facing, calling their plight horrific. Just imagine if you're a quadriplegic like me, I can't use my hands, I'm in a wheelchair. And if you were on the seventh floor of an apartment building mm. and you were in Maripol being bombed and there were rocket strikes, it's not like you can jump out of bed uh, grab a few things, rush out the front door and make a dash for the border. You can't do that. And so a lot of these people with disabilities are are stuck in apartment buildings. A lot of them are in basements. She explained how her ministry is helping get many out. We've been working with our in-country partner, Galena. Galena and our teams have been out searching for these people, uh, even in the most dangerous eastern parts of Ukraine to rescue them and get them across the border and to safe haven in not only Poland, but Germany and the Netherlands. And we've evacuated uh, over 300 people with disabilities thus far and caregivers, and we're still active. Just before the invasion, construction was to begin on a disability center in Ukraine called Johnny's House, designed to meet the spiritual, physical, economic and social needs of people living with disabilities. While the war forced the ministry to redirect its efforts, it hasn't stopped the outreach. We quickly pivoted and all the concrete, all the cement, the cinder blocks, the lumber, everything ready to go for the construction of Johnny's house in Ukraine. We suddenly reallocated and redirected uh, to be used to shore up homes and care facilities for the elderly uh, to protect people with disabilities. So those items wow. all were put to good use, uh, not in constructing a Johnny's house, but of course, barricading uh, people so that they might have a safe haven. 
a path no doubt filled with danger. But just the Christians who are volunteering to, to drive these buses along the corridors where there is heavy shelling, even the drivers of these vans are taking a great risk. Meanwhile, Johnny is encouraging believers to pray for those helping with rescue efforts in Ukraine. These people are exhausted, shell-shocked, but nevertheless, they're practicing Christianity with its sleeves rolled up. And so please pray for Galena and her network of friends and uh, co-workers who are, who are making the valiant and very brave and courageous efforts to go into the most dangerous parts, find these people with disabilities and bring them to safety. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Brave and courageous efforts indeed. Well, when her family narrowly escaped a rocket attack, one Ukrainian mother decided to take her children out of the war zone. Upon arriving in Poland, the family found help in a shelter supported by CBN's Operation Blessing. On the 27th of February, we came under fire. We were coming back from church in the evening on Sunday. A rocket flew directly at our car. Ludmilla and her family cried out for God's protection. We prayed, we screamed. I never thought my kids could pray like this. They were born and raised in a Christian family, but we never prayed so hard. The rocket was like a shooting star entering the atmosphere. Then it just went out. It didn't fall anywhere. There was no blast. None of the cars were damaged, nothing. Lyudmila left Ukraine to keep her children safe. After making the long trek to Poland, she was taken in by a local church that partners with Operation Blessing. They found refuge, but the children were still scared. After we came here and the pastor showed us the shower, restrooms, washing machine, towels, and everything, my girls said, Mom, this is such a good bomb shelter. The kids who are so scared aren't looking at the amount of toys or the playgrounds yet. It'll take time for the girls to know they're safe again. But thanks to the generosity of Operation Blessing Partners, we're working with churches in Poland to bring aid and comfort to many Ukrainian families like Ludmila's. We are very grateful for the people who are supporting us. Thank you for the help and for believing in our Ukraine. Ways to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Gordon? You can be a part of it. You can be part of the relief effort. We're working through uh, a, a wonderful warehouse facility in Poland, completely stocking that with food, water, necessities for the refugees fleeing Ukraine into Poland. We're also working with the Orphan's Promise Centers. Uh, we've been, Orphan's Promise has been there for 20 years. CBN has been in Ukraine for 30 years now. Operation Blessing operating in Ukraine for 30 years. But there's all the existing centers. These are not uh, things that are, are popped up uh, since the war. These are things that have been there for well over a decade. And we're using them now to supply relief, much needed relief for the displaced persons within Ukraine and also those refugees fleeing these horrible conditions. What's happening in there in Ukraine is absolutely horrifying. We want to be there to let people know that we love them. We want to provide for them. If you want to be a part of it, it's real easy. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us, 1-800-700-7000. Say, I want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. You can mail a check to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just put disaster relief fund in the memo line. You can text OB crisis to 71777, or you can go to CBN.com. There's a place where you can designate your gift. Either way, do it and, and be a part of helping those refugees in their hour of need. Ten years ago, author Lee Strobel set out to answer this question. Is there any scientific evidence for heaven? Well, the result, a documentary called The Case for Heaven. Recently, CBN News contributor Billy Hollowell talked with Strobel about his new film. Take a look. Can near-death experiences tell us anything reliable about life after death? And why should we trust what Jesus tells us about heaven and about hell? This is my case for heaven. 
10 years ago, Christian author Lee Strobel nearly died. That experience put him on a path to prove the existence of life after death. Strobel first rose to prominence decades ago as an atheist and journalist trying to disprove Christianity. Instead, he found Jesus sharing his journey and discovery in his 1998 bestseller, The Case for Christ. Strobel's new documentary, The Case for Heaven, explores his own brush with death and evidence for the afterlife. Why did you want to start diving into this study and this exploration of heaven? Well, I almost died um, 10 years ago. My wife found me unconscious. Uh, she called an ambulance. I, I remember waking up in the emergency room and looking up at the physician. He looked down at me and he said, you're one step away from a coma, two steps away from dying. So I linger between life and death there for quite a while. I had a rare condition called hyponatremia, which is a severe drop in my blood sodium level. And uh, so when you're in that position, it's a very clarifying situation to be in, to be on the edge of, you don't know if you're going to live, if you're going to die. Backgrounds in journalism and law, so I tend to question things. And so I, after I recovered from that, thank God, um, I, I thought, you know, I should really look at what the evidence is that supports the idea that there is an afterlife, that we do indeed live on. Because at a moment like that, nothing is more important than what happens after I close my eyes for the last time in this world. As you started to dig into it and really look and explore, what most surprised you? I tell you, I was completely surprised by the evidence for near-death experiences. I was a skeptic about it. I thought maybe it was just a lack of oxygen to the brain that caused hallucinations or something like that. Um, and what I discovered is that there have been more than 900 scholarly studies of near-death experiences published in scientific and medical journals over the last 50 years. It's a very well-studied uh, phenomenon. And The Lancet, which is the famous medical journal in England, carried an, uh, an article that analyzed near-death experiences said that no alternative explanation can account for this phenomenon. Uh, so I only looked at cases where we had corroboration. I kind of, you know, from my legal background, I wanted, I wanted cases where people saw things or heard things that they could not have seen or heard had they not had an authentic out-of-body experience. I'll give you one quick example. My favorite one is a woman named Maria who died in a hospital. And um, she described later, said, well, I was conscious the whole time. I was watching the resuscitation efforts that they were doing on my body. My, my spirit was kind of floating there in the, in the hospital room. And then my spirit floated out of the hospital. And when she was revived and her spirit returned to her body, she said, oh, by the way, there's a man's tennis shoe on the roof of the hospital. And it's dark blue. It's left footed. Uh, there's some wear over the little toe and the shoelace is tucked under the heel. So they go up, they look, and sure enough, they found it exactly as she said. So that's the kind of corroboration I'm looking for. And in my book and in the film, we document these cases. Uh, I think it's extraordinary. Extraordinary indeed, and timely. As culture reels from the impact of COVID-19, war, and chaos, Strobel believes there's a new generation being confronted with death and desperately seeking answers on heaven, hell, and salvation. He believes the case for heaven will help guide them on that journey, offering the evidence they need to embrace biblical truth. I'm Billy Hollowell for CBN News. Well, the case for heaven documentary, it's in theaters today through Wednesday, April 6th, and it's all part of a special Fathom event. So it's today through April 6th. For tickets, theater information, you can go to our website, cbnnews.com. Final Four champions go head-to-head -head in one of the most anticipated games in years. Eight-seeded North Carolina is taking on top-ranked Kansas. The last time these two teams met in the finals led to a triple overtime thriller. Sports reporter Will Dawson is in New Orleans with more on tonight's big game. Well, Gordon, we are just hours away from tonight's championship matchup between Kansas and North Carolina. New Orleans is the host city. The Big Easy is steeped in tradition. Appropriately, all four teams represented in this year's Final Four, some of college basketball's most historically prestigious programs. 
I had a chance to talk with players and coaches about their love of basketball and their faith in Christ. A knee injury just one year ago forced Villanova's starting point guard Colin Gillespie to the sidelines. This year, he led the Wildcats back to the Final Four and is thankful for the opportunity. Yeah, I don't take anything for granted. Missing all of that was, was really hard and, and it really puts a lot into perspective. You're, you're super grateful for every day that you get um, and you know that it goes by like that. So, and just kind of having that faith and that there's a bigger plan uh, is kind of already written for me. And um, uh, there's ups and downs throughout life and that's just part of life. But uh, if, you, if you keep that faith, um, then anything's possible for you. Kansas's backcourt duo Joe Yesifu and Jalen Coleman Lands have been key to the Jayhawks' success. Both credit the foundation passed on from their mothers, and with the championship game in view, they're playing for something bigger. Um, my family's always around the church, and I'm just, you know, grateful that I found that she, you know, always told me to believe in him. It's definitely a blessing being here. You know, without him, we would not be where we are today. Um, and just being in the Final Four, like not, not a lot of people, you know, have gotten to this point. Um, I try to spread his word through this game. That's what I'm going to continue to do. It's bigger than basketball. That's how I look at it. Um, along with um, what Joe was saying is, you know, it's rooted in my family, but um, throughout my life I've experienced, I have my own personal testimonies. My faith is the reason why I'm here today. It's molded me into the man I am today. So being able to use his platform to, you know, spread his word, being able to have an opportunity to still play, you know, is an opportunity uh, for us to continue doing what, you know, God has given us the talents to do, which is to play and, you know, use our talents for the greater good, so. Duke's Mark Williams gives the Blue Devils three potential top 10 picks in the upcoming NBA draft. This season, his teammate A.J. Griffin started a team Bible study, and Mark has stayed encouraged through their bond of faith. AJ starting that was really huge for us. Um, you know, we, we got a little group chat. Um, always talk, always send some uh, verses. Um, but you know, for me, it's faith's really important. You know, pray before every game. This season, Tar Heels starting guard, Leaky Black, has battled injuries and even anxiety. He's found stability and calm in his relationship with God. Um, I feel like my faith has helped me like my whole career, you know, it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows, you know, throughout my whole career here, but um, just keeping my faith, you know, has just allowed me to get to this point and uh, I'm grateful for it. Leakey also credits his relationship with coach Hubert Davis. Davis, in just his first season as the North Carolina head coach, led the team on an improbable run as an eight seed to the win over rival Duke in the final four. Because of his faith, Hubert Davis is an irreplaceable leader on and off the court. You know, having a coach like that, you know, um, it makes like the tough times, you know, easier to get through because it gives you something to look forward to. You know, at the end, you know, you always, you just stay positive, you know, just keep your faith. Is this, is this always something you could just hang your hat on, you know, when times get hard? And I think and I'm a believer too of that, so. The foundation of who I am is my relationship with Jesus. And so whether it's coaching, whether it's my marriage, whether it's my three kids, decision-making, everything is filtered through my faith. And so I can't do anything without it. It's not me sharing it, it's me being me. And so that's how I roll every day. That's just who I am. <laughs> it's amazing to see people at the pinnacle of their professions, but pinnacle of sports getting ready for one of the biggest college basketball games uh, of all time, if not certainly this year. You look at these things, and what are they looking to? Well, they're looking to Jesus, and they're giving him credit for how he's prepared them, how he's established them, how he's enabling them to do wonderful things. But even in the defeat, you look at what Coach K did. I wanted Duke to win that game just for him. But in the aftermath, what was his main concern? He wasn't concerned about himself. He wasn't concerned about the disappointment and whether he would like to go out on top or all of that. His big concern was, well, I want to take care of these young men. That was his concern. That was what is, was on his heart. When you live life God's way, wonderful things can happen. And whether through victories or through grace and defeat, he wants to be there for you.
If you don't have a relationship with him, if you don't know him, it's real easy. All you have to do is ask him. He'll show up for you. The Bible says very clearly, when you seek me with all of your heart, then you'll find me. If you want help with this prayer, we're here for you. All I have to do is pick up the phone, 1-800-700-7000, and say, can I have a relationship with Jesus? Is this real? Can I really change? Can he really be with me? Can I really know that he's guiding me throughout my life? The answer to all those questions is yes. We're not here to judge you, certainly not here to condemn you. We're here to tell you there's a God who loves you, who wants you to be with him for all eternity, but also wants to be with you throughout your life. If you want to meet him, call us, 1-800-700-7000. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Democrats are launching a series of votes and Senate floor action to confirm Katanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court by the end of the week. The Senate Judiciary Committee kicks off with a vote to move Jackson's nomination to the Senate floor. Democrats will then steer the process through the evenly divided 50 50 Senate. So far, only one Republican, Senator Susan Collins of Maine, has said she will vote for Jackson. However, she has the support of every Democrat, meaning she's all but certain to be confirmed as the first African-American woman to the high court. Well, 700 Club Canada hosted a special week of programming to honor partners all across Canada. Celebrate Partner Week featured a live viewer audience with a time of interaction and prayer with the hosts. 700 Club Canada has been airing daily for more than 10 years, with powerful testimonies and ministry segments. You can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com slash international. No job, no income, no money. That's what a Jewish family faced when Israel went into lockdown. And even worse, they were recent immigrants with no friends or relatives to help them out. Shnejana's family immigrated from Ukraine to Israel to find a better life. Her husband, Sergei, works in a factory in Israel. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, the factory closed, leaving them with no income. We were just making enough to get by before, but then Israel went into lockdown and the factories and the schools closed. I couldn't work because I needed to stay home with the children. It put us in a very desperate situation. Even after Israel eased the lockdown, the schools remained closed and Sergei's work hours at the factory were cut. They didn't know how they'd be able to afford rent or put food on the table. In the beginning, I was very scared that my children would catch the virus. And then we didn't have any money to buy food. Mentally, it was so hard and I became very depressed. Then a local church put them in touch with CBN Israel. We're making sure the family has the food they need and we're giving them gift cards to help them buy other essentials. This is the first time in our lives we've gotten help like this. There wouldn't be any food in our apartment if it wasn't for what you've given us. We are so grateful. Thanks to CBN Israel donors, Shnejana's family and others across the country are getting the support they need during this crisis. It means so much to know we're not alone in this. You've brought back real hope and joy into our home. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now, I don't know about you, but as I watch these immigrants on TV that are moving from one country to another, just coming by, by thousands and thousands, you wonder, where are they going? You know, they're, they're moving. Sometimes they don't even know where they're going. I am so happy to be able to tell you that Operation Blessing, Orphan's Promise, CBN, we're right in the heart of all of that, providing many of the needs that these people have, getting them from one place to another, showers, food, helping them to realize that there's hope that life can begin again. And that's all possible because you joined the 700 Club. So I want to say thank you for that. You know, sometimes we sit at home and we think, what can I do? I'm one person. Well, that's one thing you can do. You can join the 700 Club and make a difference in the lives of thousands and thousands of people. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. Or you could look at some of the other opportunities we have. A 700 Club Gold member joins us at $40 a month month 
or you could become a thousand club member that's eighty four dollars a month two hundred nine dollars a month is what our twenty five hundred club members share and then we have a group called the found the founders club that's four hundred and seventeen dollars or more a month ask god what he'd have you to do and then go to your phone use our toll-free number and change somebody's life today you have the ability to do that with your generosity and when you do our way of saying thank you for caring about others is to send you pat's latest book i think you're going to love this the power of the holy spirit in you understanding the miraculous power of god how it can be activated in your heart in your life this is our free gift to you so call now we'll get your gift out right away julie loved horseback riding and then she started having terrible pain in her wrists Soon, she had to give up what she loved the most until she heard a prayer on the 700 Club. I started to notice that I was having a lot of pain in my right wrist, and then it moved quickly to my left wrist. The pain accelerated into just kind of a discomfort to a burning as well. The pain started in early spring of 2019 for Julie DeLitta, it was quickly making it difficult for her to maintain her active lifestyle and do the things she loved most. Julie is uh, a, a really unique person and does a lot of tasks, both chores and fun with her hands. She loves dealing with the horses. I mean, the horses is her passion. Her husband, Mike, a retired family physician, did his best to help relieve her pain. My initial thought was that she had carpal tunnel syndrome. So I bought her some braces and uh, had her wear those pretty much day and night. And she wasn't getting relief. And I started to get concerned that we weren't dealing with carpal tunnel. I kept having to look to Mike to pick up the slack. And we have all these plans of things we wanted to do. And I all of a sudden saw myself in a light where I would be a hindrance. It was very concerning. After weeks of unrelenting pain, Julie went to a specialist who ran a blood test. It came back positive for rheumatoid arthritis. I was devastated. It is a horribly crippling disease. Here is a woman who was so active from horses to working to scuba diving. And my first thought was, that's all going away. I said, you know, Lord, I'm supposed to be your hands and your feet, but how can I do this if I don't have my hands to work with? Julie began taking medication, which helped, but with their annual missions trip to Guatemala just a few weeks away, both were concerned that her ability to serve would be very limited. But Julie wasn't about to give up so easily. She continued to pray and dig in to God's Word. I knew God would heal me. If I was reading the Word and I would see a scripture that I felt um, leaned into healing or God's promises, then, you know, I would, I would repeat that scripture over and over. Then in July, days before they were to leave on their missions trip, the couple sat down to watch The 700 Club, a show Julie has been watching and supporting for years. We were sitting on the sofa and Gordon came on and I was expecting another news segment or story or something and he started praying and having the word of knowledge and we bowed our heads and started praying. And then all of a sudden he started talking about there was someone out there with arthritis in the hands. Uh, there's someone you've got arth arthritis in both hands and it's painful to move your joints and God's just restoring everything to you. He's restoring nimbleness to your fingers. Just begin to do what you couldn't do before and realize God has just done a wonderful miracle for you. I immediately looked up and I looked over to Julie and she was looking at me and, and I'm thinking, I, I can't believe that they just said that. They're talking about you. I stood up and I took off my wrist guards and I said, I claim that, that's mine, that's for me. By the next morning, there was no pain. There was no pain. The two went to Guatemala as scheduled, and Julie was able to work and serve pain-free. After returning, she went to the doctor for a second checkup and more blood work. The second set of blood work came back, and my rheumatoid arthritis was back into normal range. I was healed. I was awestruck. I knew there was not a medical reason for those test results to come back normal because once you were diagnosed with it, you always had it. That's the way I looked at things. To see this miracle, it just has catapulted my faith.
into areas that I just didn't think I would get at least this quickly. Completely freed of pain, Julie says she no longer needs medication, and she's ecstatic to be back to the things she loves, especially her horses. But above all, she has a greater understanding of just how much God loves her. God cares for everything in my life, not just the big things, but he is involved in the most intimate details in my life. And I want to serve him, and I want to bless him, and I want his name to be glorified, not mine. Boy, what Julie shares is such a wonderful truth. God knows your name. He knows my name. He knows the things going on in our lives. And, you know, one of the keys to me in Julie's story is she went to him expectantly. She did what he asked us all to do. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. If you have a need, come to me. I'm here. I want to know you. I want to I want to share in your whatever's happening in your life. And that's exactly what she did. And God responded to her. She's a, she's a great gal. I know Julie, and I know I have seen her since she's been healed. I know that healing is real. And so today, I just want to say to you, we want to pray for you. We want you to come with us expectedly to the throne, expectantly to the throne room of God and see his answer and his response in your own life. We've got some answers to prayer here. Do you want to read yours first? Sure. Here's Stacy by email. Friday, February 11th, I was suffering with a large ulcerated sore on the roof of my mouth with blisters all around, uh, all around it. It kept me awake the night before because it hurt to swallow. Well, I was watching the 700 Club. Terry said someone has a sore on the roof of their mouth with blisters all around it. And it's so sore you can't eat or talk. God is healing that right now. And it will never come back. Well, I claim my healing in my mouth in Jesus' name. The pain was gone immediately. I was able to talk, and I called my friend right away to give her the praise report. Hallelujah. God is good. That's awesome. This is, I think she's, it's Dorothea. I hope I'm saying that right. From Brooklyn, New York. She suffered a stroke two years ago, which resulted in a crippled left hand. Her daughter massaged it and hoped to restore movement. But while watching the 700 Club on February the 24th, Dorothea heard you, Gordon, say someone, you're getting tingling right now in both of your hands. God is healing that and taking away all the inflammation and swelling and all of the difficulty. Begin to move your fingers and realize how much he's healed you and he restored you by faith she believed god for her healing immediately she discovered she could move her hand again giving god all the glory god wants to do miracles and he wants to do miracles for you all you have to do is believe there's not a special prayer there's not a special sacrifice jesus has made the prayer for you he has made the sacrifice for you just look to him. Believe in the one that God sent. That's what we're supposed to do. Believe in him. Rely on him. Trust him. Look to him. He will do it. All we have to do is believe. Let's pray. Let's believe. And God will do what he has promised to do. Lord, we come to you. We lift every need in the audience to you right now. And we just ask for your healing touch to go into their bodies now. May you be healed. May you be made whole. May there be no more pain, no more infirmity, no more disease, no more cancer, no more suffering. Jesus came that we might be healed and we might be set free from the law of sin and death. We receive all that you have for us. There's someone you've got a right hand, and uh, it's, it's curled in, and I'm not sure what the cause is other than you have tremendous pain on the outside and the top, and it's just I just see it curled. God is just stretch forth your hand. Just stretch it forth. What you couldn't do before, do now, because God is the God of the possible. He wants to make all things possible for you. Stretch forth your hand. Receive that now in Jesus' name. Tara? Yeah, there's someone else. You have an issue with your hands as well. It's a... Um...
the, the symptoms that you see are your cuticles, that the base of your fingernail are kind of gray colored, not black really, but just kind of gray. Your hands are cold all the time. Um, you've been diagnosed with something, but today that situation is changing for you. Jesus Christ is healing that for you. Lift your hands up and begin to praise him. And all of the pink and the, the warmth in your hands will come back as you receive that healing in Jesus' name. Uh, I don't know if this is the same person or, or, or someone else, but anyway, you, you're suffering with a heart condition and your skin is bluish. Your lips are blue um, because of lack of blood flow. God is healing you. He is restoring your heart muscle, restoring heart rhythm now in Jesus' name. New strength, new vitality is coming throughout your body. Take that deep breath in. Receive all that God has for you. In Jesus' name, be healed. Somebody else with spinal stenosis, God is healing that condition for you, and you're going to know because the pain is going to slowly subside and be gone. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your healing touch. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your love towards us that while we're sinners, you died for us. You gave yourself for us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share in your good report. Just give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. If you need prayer, we're here for you. We're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our honor, our privilege is to pray for you. So call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, we've got some time for some email questions. We do. The first one is from Terry Lee, who says, Why did Jesus refer to himself as the Son of Man? He's the Son of God. Well, he's both. And that's the whole promise of the Messiah, that the Messiah would come from the nation of Israel. And that's the prophecy of Moses, that God would raise up someone like Moses from within you. Uh, Daniel re re referred to the, the Messiah as the Son of Man. And it's good to know the original Hebrew behind that. And the original B Hebrew is Ben Adam and Adam. Um, and it really means you're, you're from the red clay. So God becomes just like you and me, that we were formed of the dust of the ground. He breathed his spirit into us, and we became a living soul. The Messiah identifies with all of our human weakness. He was born, and he had a body of clay, a body of flesh, and in that was inspired, filled with the Holy Spirit without measure, uh, and just did some absolutely incredible things. It's all to fulfill prophecy. Jesus is both fully man and fully God, uh, and that's why he's called and why he refers to himself as son of man. This is Sandra who says, I've been having bad, horrible dreams at night where I cannot move, and it's always about the same demon that's been bothering me since I was little. I've tried to get cleansed in my house as well. It worked for a couple of days, and then it came right back. I cannot sleep at night. I'm screaming so loud in my sleep, and it feels so real. I can feel the pain. How do I get rid of this? Uh, Sandra, I'd go to your pastor and, and walk him through this. Uh, what happened when you were young? Uh, what gave up ground here, uh, what was spoken over you, um, all needs to get canceled. Uh, that thing needs to get bound, and so it never returns again. Have your pastor pray for you. We leave you these words from 1 Peter chapter 3. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.